Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video on quartiles. In this video, we're going to look at how to find the quartiles from a list of data. So in other words, if we have a list of data, how to find the lower quartile and how to find the upper quartile. And we'll also have a look at a thing called the interquartile range. So first of all, what are the lower quartile and upper quartiles? Well, if we had a list of data in order from our lowest value to highest value, you may know that our median represents our middle point, the point where 50% of the data lies beneath it and 50% of the data lies above it. Well, our lower quartile is the point where 25% of the data lies beneath it and 75% above it. And our upper quartile represents the point where 75% of the data lies beneath it and 25% lies above it. So our lower quartile is a quarter of the way through the data and our upper quartile is three quarters of the way through the data. So let's have a look at finding the quartiles from a list of data. So here are the ages of seven cats that visit a vet. They are five, five, six, eight, nine, ten, and twelve years old. And we've been asked to find the median. So first of all, the median is quite easy. It's the point in the middle. So we now want to find our lower quartile. And our lower quartile is the 25th percentile. It's the point that's a quarter of the way through the data. So if we really look at our bottom 50% of the data here, our five, five, and six. The lower quartile will be found by finding the midpoint of those. And as you can see, we've got 5, 5, and 6, and in the middle of those is 5. So that means that our 5 is our lower quartile, that is our lower quartile. And our upper quartile, well, if we look at the upper 50% of the data, that is found by finding the middle of that data. So we've got 9, 10, and 12. And our upper quartile will be in the middle of those, so that will be 10. So our upper quartile is equal to 10. So our median was equal to 8, our lower quartile is equal to 5, and our upper quartile is equal to 10. So to find the median, you just find the middle of the data. The lower quartile, you look at the bottom 50% of the data and you find the middle of that. And our upper quartile is found by looking at the upper 50% of the data and finding the middle of that. That's quite nice whenever there's a small amount of data on our list, but what if there's a large amount of data and we want to find the position of the lower quartile, median, or upper quartile quickly? Now, at GCSE level, one of the exam boards has specified what version of the formula they want you to use to find this. And the other exam board, the other major one, uh, they tend to ask questions where this formula works quite nicely as well. So if you wanted to find the position of the median, you take the number of numbers, add one and divide by two, and that will tell you the position of the median. So in our last list, we had seven numbers. So we would take seven, add one and divide by two. Seven plus one is eight divided by two is equal to four. So that would be our fourth value in the list. And as you can see, our median was our one, two, three, fourth value. Our lower quartile, so the version of the formula that they've specified is n plus one divided by four. So you take the number of numbers, seven, add one and divide by four. Seven plus one is eight divided by four is two. So the second value is the lower quartile. And as you can see, our lower quartile is the second value. So our upper quartile, to find the position of our upper quartile, we take our position of our lower quartile and times it by three. So we take the second value and we multiply it by three, so that would be the sixth value. And if you look at our list of data, our one, two, three, four, five, sixth value was the upper quartile. So at GCSE level, to find the position of the lower quartile and upper quartile, we would add one and divide by four to find the position of the lower quartile, and then times that by three to find the position of the upper quartile. So let's have a look at some questions now. So here are the ages of 11 people, 20, 24, 29, 30, 36, 37, 41, 42, 50, 55, and 56. And we've been asked to find the median, the lower quartile, and the upper quartile. So to find the position of the median, we take our number of numbers, 11, we add one, which is 12, and divide by two. So that's a sick value. So the median is a sick value. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 37 is the median. Okay, our lower quartile, we're gonna add one and divide by four. So we've got 11 values. So 11 add one is equal to 12, divided by four is equal to three. So it's our third value in our list. One, two, three, 29. And our upper quartile, well, we take our position of the lower quartile, three, we times that by three, so three times three, because three quarters, is equal to nine. So it's the ninth value. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's equal to 50. So our upper quartile is equal to 50. As shown in the first example, we could have found the median, and then we could have found the middle of the lower 50% of the data for the lower quartile, and the middle of the upper 50% of the data to find the upper quartile. But this technique can help speed us up a bit. Now we've talked a bit about our quartiles. Now let's talk about the interquartile range. So let's start off by looking at the range. Sometimes in maths, we measure how much the data is spread out by looking at the range. And the range is found by taking the highest value and subtracting the lowest value. And that will tell you how spread out the data is. And that measures how spread out all the data is. 
Now, sometimes in maths, instead of looking at the range, which is taking the highest value and the lowest value and working the difference between them, sometimes we focus on the middle 50% of the data. We look at the lower quartile and the upper quartile, and we subtract those values to find how spread out the middle 50% of the data is. Now, that interquartile range is actually really useful because sometimes the range can be affected by outliers. So one really large number can mean that you get a very large range. But whenever you're looking at the interquartile range, because we don't look at our lowest value and highest values, we only look at the middle 50% of the data, that interquartile range tells us how spread out the middle 50% is, and it excludes any outliers or any extreme values. So it means it can be more reliable. So the interquartile range is a more reliable measure of spread than the range. Okay, let's have a look at a question now. So here we've got the hourly rates of pay of seven workers, and we've got 8 pound 50, 9 pound 25, £8.70, £14.10p, £9.50, £10.75, and £8.80. The first thing I've noticed here is that our numbers aren't in order, so let's arrange them in order, and there you go. So we have got our 850, 870, 880, 925, 9.50, 10.75, and 14.10. And we've been asked to find the lower quartile, upper quartile, and the interquartile range. So the seven values, so to find the lower quartile, we add one, which is equal to eight and divide by four, and that's equal to two. So our second value is our lower quartile. So our second value in order is 8.70. So 8.70 is our lower quartile. Our upper quartile, well, we know the lower quartile is the second value. So if we times that by three, that means that our upper quartile is our sixth value. One, two, three, four, five, six. So our upper quartile is 10.75. And finally, we want to find the interquartile range. Well, that's the difference between them. So we take our 1075 and we take away 8 pound 70, and that leaves us with 2 pound 5 pence. So our interquartile range, how spread out the middle 50% of the data is, is 2 pound 5p. Our last question says, here are the heights of 15 people. And we've got the heights and they've been placed in order, which is fantastic. So we've got 140 centimeters, 148, 149, 150, all the way up to 197 centimeters. And we've been asked to find the interquartile range. So we've got 15 values. So take our 15 values, well, add one and divide by four. 15 add one is 16, divided by four is equal to four. So our fourth value is our lower quartile. So our lower quartile equals one, two, three, four. This value here, which is 150 centimeters. Our upper quartile is found by, well, we know our position of our lower quartile is four. So if we do four times three, we get that's equal to 12. So our 12th value is our upper quartile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So our upper quartile is 165 centimeters. And to find the interquartile range, or sometimes it's abbreviated to IQR, interquartile range, what we do is we take our 165 and subtract our 150 and see that that's equal to 15 centimetres. So our interquartile range is equal to 15 centimetres. And our last question says, explain why the interquartile range may be a better measure of spread than the range. Now, if you have a look at these heights, we clearly see that this very tall person here of 197 they might be an outlier and they make our range a lot bigger. If we look at our 140 centimetres to 170 centimetres, if we were just to take the range of those values, our first 14 people, the range is only 30 centimetres. Whenever this 15th person comes along with a height of 197, if we work out the range, the range jumps up to 57 centimetres, so it's a big increase. Whereas the interquartile range isn't affected by outliers, it only looks at the middle 50% of the data. So any really, really, really tall people that just suddenly come along, they're not going to suddenly bring the range up. So explain why the interquartile range is a better measure than spread than the range. It's not affected by outliers or extreme values. And that's it. So the lower quartile is the point in the data that 25% of the data lies beneath it and 75% lies above it. The upper quartile represents the point that 75% of the data lies beneath. The interquartile range is found by working out the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So the interquartile range is equal to the upper quartile, subtract the lower quartile. And also at GCSE level, you may want to find the position of the lower quartile and upper quartile, n plus one divided by four and for the lower quartile, and you can times that by three to find the position of the upper quartile. And that's it.